All right, the notes were correct. Fernando Tatis uh, meeting the media yesterday in San Diego after he met his team. I would prefer not A.J. Preller sitting on the dugout. When he get, talked to the media, he, he did, which bothers me a little bit. Kevin A.C., of course, covers him, San Diego Union Tribune, and the franchise. Kev, welcome. Uh, what's the feeling? I'm concerned with the fans, first off. What is the sense in that city? Are they willing to uh, forgive and forget? Is this going to linger for a long time? How about the fan base of the Padres? Only team in town, their best player now out for over a year. Let me hear their, their, their first. Go ahead. People are upset. People were very upset. I think that yesterday was significant. I think it was more significant for the team. It was significant for the fans. It'll take time. Fernando Tatis Jr. will come back, be the player that he was, and as is the case with many players, especially in their home ballpark, Fernando's going to hear it all over Major League Baseball when he goes and he's the visitor. I think here there is no question that Fernando Tatis Jr. will widely be embraced again. Oh, he will be. So they're annoyed now, but you think at the end of the day things would be okay. Did he hit the right notes when you bounced around that uh, club, Padre clubhouse last night? And they had some things to say when this occurred. Did they hit the right notes in his apology? How about that? I believe that he did inside. That is the impression that you get. Um, it was a players-only meeting. There were guys that were very upset. Now, that doesn't mean they can't also love this guy. There is no one on the planet that is more forgiving, more willing to accept than teammates. And Fernando Tatis Jr., he made a mistake, whatever that mistake was. Uh, he made a mistake and his teammates are going to forgive him. Remember, led the National League in home runs last year, does things that other people can't. They're angry because he let them down this year. For that very same reason, they'll be very excited to have him back next year. Well, he made two mistakes, too, because we got to count the motorcycle accident, too, when he broke his wrist. We got to do we, do we count. Do we let that go, or, or is that still lingering as far as the Padres are concerned, the December motorcycle accident, which cost them the beginning of the season? What happened here is with, with this, with the positive test, that caused like a revisiting and where people were willing to be like, well, OK, you know, young guy, this is who Fernando Tatis Jr. is. And when I say people, I mean people in the organization, teammates. That's who Fernando Tatis Jr. is. Oh, man. Now it's a pattern. And that's A.J. Preller's word. That's the word of some of the players. And it was immaturity. And these are things that they talked about again. Fernando Tatis Jr. came in and struck the right notes. He did. He showed sincerity to them. That is what they talked about. The, he showed sincerity, remorse, and at the end of their time together yesterday, there were hugs, uh, and I, I think that all signs point to that as long as, now look, this was the first steps, just like surgery. Surgery, that's something the team wanted him to get. Some people around him wanted to, him to have last offseason. Him having that now is one of the steps also. So it's Fernando Tatis Jr. doing the right things going forward, not just what he did yesterday, but that was a big deal. The shoulder, of course, good point by Kev. How about the team, uh, Kevin? I, I think there's been a little, uh, you know, I think this has an effect them a little bit. They haven't played well. You know, they got Soto. They hmm. got off to a good start. They got murdered in L.A. against the Dodgers. They, you know, they had to work hard to split a series with Washington. They haven't scored at all. Uh, you know, they didn't have a great road trip, 3-3, three and three, with Miami and Washington. They've really kind of stumbled around. And last year they weren't great late, too. What's your take on the ball club right now? Let me hear. It's almost inexplicable, which is exactly what you want to hear from your guest, Chris. Uh, it is, uh, it's unbelievable. They averaged more runs per game uh, when b the first whatever it was, 104 games w without the trio that they got at the trade deadline, slightly more than what they're averaging now. They either score 7, 8, 9, 13 runs, or they score 3, 2, 1, or 0 runs with these guys. There's too much. You look at this lineup. It did get lengthened. You do see they are getting guys on base. I think there's only a couple teams in the major leagues that get more runners in scoring position. It's that they're not getting timely hits. It appears, you know, the theory inside that uh, there's some pressing going on. Why, when you have these guys in the lineup? Well, that's the question they're asking themselves. It really does seem like they're, they're too good for this to keep happening. There are three teams for two spots. So... Uh, you know, if, I, if you uh, forced me to bet, it's still going to bet the Padres are, are a playoff team come October. Yeah, I would agree with that. Phillies, I think, will get in. I think it will be them and Milwaukee, and I think they get that last spot. Uh, I do happen to agree with you there. What's going on with Soto's back? I know he's not been 100%. What can you tell me about that here today, Kev? 
Well, sort of typical where I think what's going to happen today, and maybe I've missed it, the lineup's already been posted, but Bob Melvin seemed pessimistic, or at least like he was going to be cautious. And even though Juan Soto last night was saying that he was going to be okay, because Juan Soto doesn't miss time very often, and this is something that hadn't happened before where it kind of, I think he called it a shock. And so it's sort of typical, like I said, that the player said, oh, yeah, I'll be good to go. And the manager said, hey, let's hold off. Got a day game today, an off day tomorrow, and maybe get him back in the lineup Friday. Maybe Juan Soto came out today. He was doing cartwheels, got to the clubhouse, and convinced Bob Melvin to put him in the lineup. But I think they're going to be cautious. You know, what's funny about the Padres, they've made all these great moves, and nobody could argue with the idea of them. Hosmer, of course, they gave him a fortune. You know, Machado they gave $300 million to. They signed Tatis to the big contract before spring training last year. They make this trade here for Soto. They've done good things with uh, the Indians getting Clevenger. And for whatever the reason, uh, the karma has not hit yet. I mean, it's weird for a team that's never won a friend, never won a championship, only two World Series. It's incredible that they really can't get on the same page and catch a little lightning in a bottle. That's been the plight of this organization for so long, and it seems like it's continuing in the summer of 22, Kev. Let me get your take there. Go ahead. That's where I came up with the inexplicable. You cannot argue with these moves. Show me one person uh, that... Well, I shouldn't say that, but show me very many people that disagreed with the moves, uh, this incredible trade trades that they made. Josh Hader, for goodness sake, is he, you're telling me he's not one of the top two, three closers, uh, relievers in the game. He comes here. He can't throw a strike. Um, you know, they'll make some changes there. I think they trust that Josh Hader and these other players will be the players that they've been before they got here. But Absolutely. Heck, Mike Clevenger has performed at a, at a high level for a guy coming back from Tommy John. Manny Machado for the last three years has largely performed at an MVP level. If it weren't for Paul Goldschmidt, you know, Manny probably have my vote this year. Uh, you know, Tatis was a big blow being out for the year. I don't, there's a ripple effect there where guys have to bat out of, you know, bat out of order. More is expected of guys who were going to be role players. That's a big deal. But you have guys like Joe Musgrove, you Darvish, uh, Blake Snell lately pitching. Uh, it is, it's, it's inexplicable how it hasn't come together. Sometimes it, it takes some time. You don't just plug and play, bring a guy in at the trade deadline. But when you're talking about a player of the caliber of uh, Juan Soto, you're talking about Josh Bell, who's hitting 301 when he got here, below 200 since then. That's why I keep coming back to that word. I, I don't have an explanation for it. Um, you have the experienced manager, everyone's saying the right things. I guess that's where their faith uh, and mine as outside observer comes in that I still think it's a playoff team with good enough players to actually make a run should they play well enough here uh, in the end of August and September to actually get in the playoffs. And right now they would be at St. Louis. Kevin, good job. Thanks very much. Appreciate it here today. Take care.